Thinking about assessments. There are a lot of choices. We have behavioral assessments, intelligence assessments, values assessments, emotional intelligence assessments, and sometimes combination of all of that. So I'm going to speak to you about the different types of assessments, how to think about them, and when to use them. Behavior assessments are the one that's most common to, to us. There's personality tests, DISC, or Myers-Briggs, for, Briggs, for example. And then intelligence, IQ assessments. There are also fluid intelligence assessments. Someone who wins Jeopardy, for example, would have high fluid intelligence. And this might matter if you're looking for an executive or leadership role. How fast can they think and how fast can they think on their feet? And then values assessments. Values assessments tell you a lot about why someone is doing what they're doing. You can't see that. You can see behavior. I can see detail orientation or security minded or extroverted behavior, but I can't see values. I can't see if someone really values people, if they value aesthetics, if they value time and money, if they value tradition and practices, or if they value power and individuality, which is, is an important thing to measure sometimes. And then there's emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is how people grow and develop. We, the capacity for growth and development lies in this quadrant. That's why I have arrows here. Our biggest capacity for growth is with emotional intelligence. So the more we're able to have emotion, experience emotion, and yet still act from what we're committed to and achieve our goals and be who we want to be and create what we want to create, or another way of saying that is the more we learn to become at home with our fear and unstoppable around it, the more emotional intelligent we become. Emotional intelligence um, gets developed as we process ex experiences that are happening in our lives. And then creating self-awareness around that will accelerate that process. So here's why this matters. Because behavior and IQ are formed between four and six years old, It, it's fixed, there's nothing you can do about that. The only reason to assess for that is to make sure that someone is a fit for their role. It's less stressful. If you put an extrovert behind a computer and they never get to talk to anyone, they're probably not going to be as good at their job, even if they're trained, than they would be if it was with their natural behavior. So in general, it's good to have a good fit if you're hiring. Now, with that said, everything trumps behavior. Intelligence trumps behavior. There is nothing, if you take DIS for example, there is nothing worse than a dumb D, right? Like someone who doesn't understand they're a bull in the china shop and they shouldn't point their finger at someone or call names or be really aggressive. So intelligence, you learn when your behavior works and when it doesn't when you're smart. Training and experience trump behavior. My behavior assessment says I'm a horrible time manager, yet I work by my schedule from hour to hour every day, all day long. And that has to do with my training and my experience. I've learned to give someone else my schedule, actually. And then values. This changes quite often. This is why people do what they're going to do. And if you have someone who's not a behavior fit for the job, the first thing you want to jump to is, to is assessing them for values. And here's why. I assessed a coach recently that I was hiring and her behavior was all cold behavior, very results oriented, task oriented behavior, not what you would think of for a coach. So I immediately went to a values assessment because I'd heard her coach and she was warm and very people focused and discovered that she had an extremely high altruism and social uh, value, which was trumping her behaviors. So she was actually one of the best coaches that I've ever heard, but didn't have the behavior profile for that role. So sometimes when it doesn't make sense, jump to values assessment because their why could be trumping behavior. Another good example is if I have a mother with four kids they need to feed, even if they're an introvert, they're very likely going to be able to do that extrovert job, that sales job, because they have a big, big why. 
okay? Values change. What I find important now is not what I found important in my 20s. And again, emotional intelligence. You know, I think the only time to assess around this is when you want to assess yourself, not others. Find out where you are, what there is for you to work on. In general, it breaks down to four components, understanding self, managing self, understanding others, and managing others, and there are subsets of that. So when you emotionally, when you test yourself, it will support you in understanding where to put your attention so that you can grow. All right, if you're still with me, here's when not to use them, okay? When not to use assessments is when a real one-on-one -on -one or group dialogue would make a larger difference. People will use assessments to crutch their discomfort for conversation. So uh, two people aren't getting along, they're like, let's assess them. Maybe what's really needed is some good managerial and leadership conversation with the two employees or a conversation around culture. So don't use assessments to replace what's really needed, which is that one-on-one -on -one conversation. Don't use assessments to label and categorize your employees. It's actually illegal, for one thing, but uh, assessments can get you in a lot of trouble with employees if they feel like they're being singled out because they're different from the rest of the group. If they feel like they didn't get the promotion or the job or uh, that next raise because you did an assessment with them, when you're doing assessments, if you're going to do it for one, definitely do it for all. But there's some real gray around how you assess your employees and when to assess them. So please talk to us first or consult an HR consultant so you'll know when to do that. So here's what I want to leave you with. Notice that everything trumps behavior. Don't stop. If you do a behavioral assessment with someone, don't stop there. It is only a small, small piece of who someone is and what they're capable of in terms of growth and development.